In this episode, we'll learn about auto exposure bracketing. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It is the camera store that has everything for photographers. You can check them out at adorama.com. Well, a few weeks ago, I was talking to some of my photographer friends about auto exposure bracketing, and one of my friends said he was having issues when shooting in shutter priority mode. Specifically, he said, sometimes exposure bracketing just didn't work. Well, before we get into that, I just want to remind you that Adorama has some terrific contests, and if you enter, you could win some great prizes. Well, first, let's talk about what exposure bracketing is. Bracketing is simply taking a series of photos of the same scene, usually three photos, one that's exposed correctly, one that is underexposed, and one that is overexposed. Normally, you under and overexpose by the same amount. So if you had an underexposed shot that was underexposed by one stop, your overexposed shot would be overexposed by one stop as well. Well, almost all cameras have an auto exposure bracketing feature. Now, this is normally referred to as AEB. That stands for auto exposure bracketing. And it normally has a symbol that looks something like this. So if you see that on your camera's menu, that is the auto exposure bracketing symbol. Before we get into how auto exposure bracketing works, let's talk about why you might want to use it. Now, traditionally, auto exposure bracketing is used in one of two scenarios. The first is when you're not quite certain of your exposure, but you want to make absolutely certain you get the shot. This is something that landscape photographers have been using for years. Auto exposure bracketing is also used to create HDR images. HDR stands for high dynamic range, and it's when you take three or more photos and you combine them to create an image that has a photorealistic effect. In fact, I created an HDR image and used auto exposure bracketing in the last episode of Exploring Photography to create this image of the Basilica of the National Vow. Almost all cameras with auto exposure bracketing have the same basic settings. Now, for the specifics of your camera, make sure you check your camera's user manual, but generally, all cameras work something like this. The first thing you need to do is turn on auto exposure bracketing. Next, some cameras allow you to set how many shots you'd like to take in your auto exposure bracketing series. The third thing you need to do is tell your camera how much to over and underexpose each image. This usually ranges from one-third to three stops. Finally, set your drive mode to continuous or self-timer mode. Once this is all set up, you just press the shutter release once to take all the shots in the series. Now, on some cameras, you can set the drive mode to single to allow you to take each of the shots individually using a separate shutter press for each of the shots. It's important to understand that auto exposure bracketing works differently in different modes. And this is why my friend was having issues when auto exposure bracketing using shutter priority mode. Now to understand this, let's first take a look at how auto exposure bracketing works in aperture priority mode. In aperture priority mode, you set the camera's aperture. Now let's say we've set our aperture to f8. Now the camera will use its built-in light meter to set the shutter for a proper exposure. Now, for argument's sake, let's say our shutter speed is 1 250th of a second for a proper exposure. If we've set our auto exposure bracketing to under and over exposed by one stop, here's what will happen. The first correctly exposed photo will be made at f8 and 1 250th of a second. The second underexposed shot will be made at f8 and 1 500th of a second. And the third overexposed shot will be made at f8 and 1 125th of a second. Our aperture is staying the same, but our shutter is changing to create those under and overexposed images. Now, because our shutter can slow all the way down to 30 seconds and speed up to 4,000th of a second, and even on some cameras go all the way up to 8,000th of a second, we have a lot of latitude when we're exposure bracketing using aperture priority mode. Now, in shutter priority mode, the exact opposite is happening. Our shutter is staying the same, but our aperture is opening and closing to create the over and underexposed images. And this is where we can run into a lot of issues. Let's say that we have an image where we have a proper exposure of 1 60th of a second at f2.8, and we want to bracket by one stop. That's one image overexposed by one stop and one image underexposed by one stop. Let's also assume our lens has a maximum aperture opening of f2.8. Our first properly exposed image will be made at 1 60th of a second at f2.8. 
our second underexposed image will be made at 1 60th of a second at f4. But we'll run into issues on our third overexposed image. To overexpose by a full stop, our aperture would need to open to f2, but our lens isn't able to do this. So we just end up with an additional properly exposed image shot at f2.8. To fix the issue, you'd need to increase your ISO by one stop so your aperture would have some room to breathe, or you could adjust your shutter by one stop as well. It doesn't really matter which way you choose. The important thing to remember is that when you're in shutter priority mode using auto exposure bracketing, you're going to run into issues when the aperture is fully open for the properly exposed image. Now, what about manual mode? Well, in manual mode, there is no auto exposure bracketing. You do it everything manually. You can either adjust the aperture to over and underexpose or uh, change the shutter to do the trick. So in manual mode, you just have to do it yourself. Now, two additional notes about auto exposure bracketing. The first is when I'm using auto exposure bracketing, I almost always use aperture priority mode because in shutter priority mode, when the aperture changes, your depth of field changes as well. And so that's something I try to avoid. And the second thing is bracketing isn't just for exposure. You can also bracket your white balance, you can bracket your ISO, and you can even bracket your focus. In fact, these are topics that we'll cover in future episodes of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. So don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV so you don't miss a single episode. There's all kinds of stuff that I'm doing, but there's all kinds of contributors as well. And you can check out the Adorama Learning Center for all kinds of articles about the stuff that we're talking about today. And you can see all of the past episodes as well. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you again in the next episode. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.